Continuing our discussion about the electric field, we're going to look at, we've already looked at the electric field from one and two charges. Today we're going to look at the electric field from multiple charges. Um, so we're going to look at two really quick examples and we're not going to use any numbers. We, we've got plenty of time to do that in class. We're just going to look in general about how to set these things up. So let's say that I have I have three charges. Let's say this is plus Q, this is minus Q, um, and this over here will make plus 2Q. And each one of these things are a distance of R, to make things easy, R apart. What I want to know is what's the electric field here because of all three charges. Um, and then one more piece of information we need, I guess, is and that's the other side of our, our square. The other piece of information we're going to need is the length right here. Um, I'll let you work that out on your own. But it's going to be the square root of 2 times that distance r. So I want the electric field at this point from all of these charges. So, what we're going to do is call this one charge 1, this one charge 2, and this one charge 3. And we're going to look at the individual electric field from each one of those. Okay, and then how we might have to add them together. So, charge 1 is positive. So, at this point, because of charge 1, because it's positive, the electric field points away from it. That's E1. And E1 is going to be equal to K times Q over, well, it's a distance of R away. So K times Q over R squared. Then we're going to look at, at the electric field there from this charge, charge 2. Well, that's a negative charge, so the electric field is going to point towards it. So E2 is going to point towards that charge. E2 is going to be... We already did the direction, just kq over the distance, root 2r squared. So root 2r squared gives me 2r. No, sorry. Gives me 2r squared. Let me clean that up for you. kq over root 2r quantity squared so that gives me k times q over 2 and just the r will be squared with that but e2 is pointing in that direction and then looking at e3 again that's a positive charge so it's going to point up away from it because it's a positive charge e3 here is going to be k times 2q over r squared. Now, we're not going to do it here, but if we wanted to add all of those together, we'd have to break them up into their x components and into their y components. So if we were to look at E1, well, it only has an x component, that's kq over r squared plus 0, right? E2 has both an x component and a y component and looking at them they're both negative so it's it's uh, kq over 2r squared times let's say cosine 45 but that's negative and then this one's negative negative kq over 2r squared times the sine of 45 that's still negative and then the third component, well, that doesn't have anything in the x direction. In the y direction, it's positive k times 2q over r squared. Now, we're not going to look at anything this complicated. I'm not going to make you do all of that math. I might ask you to conceptually think about where the arrows point. I, I, I may not make you do this. But you do need to know 
in general what what the direction of the electric field is going to be from multiple charges at a point. Um, another way we might do this is by is by looking at symmetrical situations. If I have all of those positive charges and I want to know about the electric field in the middle, I have all these positive charges and I want to know about the electric field in the middle. Let's imagine each one of these is a distance of s away. Okay, So take a moment, think about the electric field in the center of that square. In fact, that's going to be a discussion that we have in class tomorrow. So on your to-do list, is to find the electric field at the center and be prepared to discuss why or how you know. Okay, but this is going to be something that we talk about in class tomorrow. And I'm going to call on somebody random, so you better be prepared and ready to do this. Um, the nice thing about electric fields is that it can give us a visual of what's going on in space. That's why we like electric fields. The way we do that is with electric field lines. And so what we have here is a plot. What we've done is taken what we call a test charge. We've put our test charge at different places in space around these two charges. And we've looked at the force on that test charge, and we've just drawn an arrow indicating the direction of the force. Now, looking at everything we see here, okay, looking at all of this, I see that the force on my tiny positive test charge is pointing away from this one and towards this one. Well, that means this one's going to be positive and the other one's going to be negative. Now, as we draw our electric field lines, it's just sort of following along with this and connecting up the dots. My electric field line is going to point from positive to negative. My electric field lines are not going to cross. They're going to come off of my charges at right angles to where the charges are. And what this does is give me a visualization of what's going on with the electric field. I guess if we wanted to, we could bring this one all the way around. Um, now, we see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, wait a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten from here, and we only have one, two, three, four, five, six. That means this charge is stronger than this charge. The positive charge is stronger than the negative charge. I got more lines coming off of it. It's, it's, we're just going to have to take some practice with electric field lines. They're kind of a pain to draw, but we need to be able to interpret the graph. So, one thing we know about electric field lines is that they point. from positive to negative charges, always. That arrow is going to point to a negative charge. That arrow is going to point away from a positive charge. The second thing we know about this, and this is more for a rule for drawing these things, is that the electric field lines do not cross. Okay. And the third thing what we really have to remember is that the number of lines the number of lines is proportional to the size or the magnitude I drew this backwards I probably didn't need this one here so we'll pretend it's not there by erasing it. Um, if this were my drawing, I would have five lines coming off of this and ten lines coming off of this, telling me that this one would be positive 2q and this one would be negative q. 
There's not a set five lines goes with one cube. They're just proportional. There are twice as many lines here as there are here. Okay. Um, the last thing we need to remember is that the density of lines indicates the strength of the electric field. Okay. So if I look here in between these two at this spot, well there are a lot of lines around it. It's pretty strong. But if I were to go over here, I wouldn't see that many lines. Telling me that the electric field wouldn't be very strong over there. Now, we are going to spend a lot of time on Friday to on Friday you're going to go on you're going to have a worksheet drawing electric field lines just to give you some practice looking at those and some practice interpreting those now that we have this idea of electric field lines what we can do is put a charge in an electric field and, and look at the force acting on that so let's imagine that we have an electric field that's pointing this way I'm going to go two different examples in this same electric field so we're going to draw it all the way down the page and let's say that this electric field is constantly 10 newtons per coulomb so for our first thing in here we're going to place at rest a positive charge and that positive charge Q uh, is equal to 4 coulombs. Now, when I put this in here, it's going to experience a force. What we want to do is figure out how much that force is. Now, if we remember back, we said the electric field was force divided by charge. So we're going to be able to find the force by saying it's the charge in an electric field times the magnitude of that electric field. So if I want the magnitude of this force, it's just going to be 4 coulombs times 10 newtons per coulomb. Looking at the units, coulombs cross out, and for my force, I end up with 40 newtons. But I'm not done yet. Force is a vector. So we have to go through a thought here. I have a positive charge in an electric field. Well, we know that the electric field points in the direction of a positive charge, in the direction of the force acting on a positive charge. So if I wanted to know the direction here, the force on this charge would point with the electric field because this charge is positive. It does what the electric field says. Another way to think about it is my electric field points away from positive charge and towards a negative charge. So if I were to put a positive charge in here, it wants to move towards the negative and away from the positive with the electric field lines. Next example, let's say we put a negative charge in here. And the magnitude of my negative charge is negative 2 coulombs. I know these are simple numbers. Most of this is to get the direction. So if I want the force, it's going to be Q times the electric field. So 2 coulombs times 10 newtons per coulomb. If you wanted to, you could put the negative sign in here, and the force would be a negative 20 newtons. Now, because this is a negative charge, and because the electric field points in the direction of a positive charge, or in the direction of the force on a positive charge, the force on my negative charge will be opposite the electric field. And again, if we think that the electric field points from positive and towards negative, that negative charge wants to go in the direction where a positive charge might be and away from this negative charge. Also, that negative sign right there, if the force is negative, it's in the opposite direction of the electric field. It's a nice thing for, for what that negative sign might tell me.